myself. Now, in regards to the text that I mentioned earlier and that information, as I mentioned, this was somebody who was very close to me who I trust wholeheartedly. And this person is good friends with someone very close to the investigation. So this person shared some text screenshots with me that contain some pretty horrific details that not only we haven't heard before, but that make this case make a lot more sense. And I don't want to say the case itself and why this happened, but certain details we've heard along the way, it starts to kind of tie it all together a little bit more, for me at least. I want to warn you, these details are graphic and very disturbing. Also, as always, do your own research because until this is officially tied back to the affidavit once it's released, it is all alleged at this point. But this message says, my sister's best friend from college is married to an FBI agent. He was one of the first FBI agents allowed at the scene in Moscow. Apparently, the murderer's knife sheath was found under the body of Ethan. They were able to find DNA on the sheath and sent it to 23andMe. A cousin of the killer, aka Brian, has done 23andMe, so they were able to somehow then link it to Brian. That, plus a cat, happened to be taking a pee and set off a nearby ring camera, which is where they were able to see the Hyundai Elantra, which of course the suspected killer drove. They then tracked him to Pennsylvania, where he was home on winter break with family, and agents posed as garbage men and went through the family's garbage to find DNA and confirm the DNA match. From the text message my sister received from the FBI agent, apparently it is one of the most gruesome crime scenes he's ever been a part of. Ethan's legs were sliced all the way down to the hamstrings. One of the girls was stabbed 54 times and beaten so badly that every bone in her face was broken and so sunken in that she was unrecognizable. One of the cops said that one of the girls in the basement who survived went by the staircase and she thought it was Ethan and yelled at him to shut the fuck up, but it was actually the killer. The killer then left after he saw her, but she didn't know it was him though at the time. Now, obviously a lot to unload there. Let me start by saying the details of Ethan and being sliced down to his hamstrings do match what Kaylee's dad said about this being gruesome and sadistic. Also, we know that the coroner had made those comments about it not being traditional stab wounds, but more in line with being tears and gashes. These details also explain why the police began looking for an Elantra specifically because of that ring camera footage. Now, you may be asking like I did. Well, if Brian saw the roommates and if the roommate yelled out to him, why didn't he kill her too? But I think it could be for a multitude of reasons. Based on the layout of the house, which we know is odd and kind of had everybody questioning from the beginning what floor was technically which, I think that he may not have known that anybody lived on that basement level. So I think it's possible that he was spooked and fled. If it were dark and she just yelled up the staircase in the dark saying, you know, shut up, Ethan, without truly seeing each other or making eye contact, he could have easily snuck away. I also think it's entirely possible that he was physically exhausted after brutally murdering four people and chose to flee rather than go downstairs and risk multiple people being down there, being caught by them or being overpowered and killed himself or them calling 911 and then him getting caught. I would think better to flee than to walk downstairs into a situation that is unknown if you don't know how many people are down there. And him fleeing could also explain why the knife sheath was left behind and then later found. Maybe he was in a rush and it was sloppy. The police also announced right away, very early on in all this, the type of weapon that they were looking for, that it was a K-bar knife or however you pronounce it. And surely you would be able to learn based on the wounds what kind of weapon was used. But if the sheath was left behind, that also, is my, in my opinion, would be a very quick way to identify what kind of weapon was used because they identified the weapon and said that they were looking for that type of weapon almost immediately. It wasn't after any autopsies. It wasn't after anything like that. It was right away. So. I would think you would have to either know on site that that's the kind of weapon that would cause those type of wounds, or if you see the sheath that those are often stored in, left behind, you would automatically know that that was the kind of weapon that was used. Like I said, I have no reason to believe that this person would lie or fabricate things as they are the least dramatic person I know, don't follow true crime, haven't been following any of the craziness in this case, but please make a judgment yourself. I also think that the stab wound number being 54 is very specific, it's a very detailed specific number to give and to provide, and with so much of the conversation in the beginning of this case and still being that the wounds were not equal and that this appeared targeted, that also would make a lot of sense. So again, make a judgment yourself and if this is all technically alleged until it is tied back to the official affidavit, but I wanted to share this information with you. I just received it this morning and you know, I always will try to be transparent with you. So anyway. <laughs>